welcome to the Global AI Summit. We have gathered for you from around the world industry leaders, policymakers, change makers, philosophers, and academics coming together to showcase the most brilliant innovations in artificial intelligence. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank the Secretary General, and I'd like to thank all of the DCO for that very inspiring declaration and the work that you are doing on behalf of us all. Um, Your Excellencies, it's a privilege to be on this panel with you. Thank you for being with us. And I think the Secretary General has made the intention, the aniya, of this declaration very clear. But we'd like to hear from each of you about what it means, why it's important for your countries and for the community of the DCO in particular. Your Excellency, it's a pleasure to have you with us. From the perspective of Nigeria, tell us why it is important that the DCO has reached this point to agree on this declaration. Thank you very much. Firstly, let me begin by appreciating the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for organizing this uh, Global Artificial Intelligence Summit, and secondly, for inviting us to be part of uh, the event. Uh, We are most appreciative to the Kingdom and also to the relevant institutions of government that organized the event and also invited us to be part of it. I will join my colleagues from Djibouti and also from uh, uh, Jordan that firstly, this declaration, which is more for an action, is very dear to me because in Nigeria and particularly at the Ministry of uh, Communications and Digital Economy, we value action. Mm. And uh, we are always impressed by action, not by strategy formulation. So because of this, if you develop a strategy without implementation, I cannot be intimidated by that. But what we admire most is when you kickstart the implementation. So by beginning the implementation, you are 50% done. It is because of this I admire this declaration because it's a declaration for action. Secondly, if you look at the seven pillars of a digital corporation organization, this initiative on artificial intelligence, you will discover they are in total alignment with the eight pillars of national digital economy policy and strategy for a digital Nigeria. Here you have seven pillars, there we have eight pillars. Number one is developmental regulation, number two, digital skills, Number three, solid infrastructure. Number four, service infrastructure. Number five, digital services. Number six, soft infrastructure. Number seven, digital society and emerging technologies. Number eight, indigenous content development and promotion. Mm -hmm. So the seven pillars here are in total alignment with the eight pillars of our national digital economy for a digital Nigeria. Thirdly, it means a lot to us because I strongly believe that digital economy or emerging technology cannot be implemented in silos. Today, the advancement of technology, particularly in the fourth industrial revolution, in most cases, border is no more respected, and there is no monopoly of wisdom and knowledge. The more we come together, the more we agree to partner and collaborate together, the more we are successful. Mm -hmm. Because there is no institution or country that has monopoly of wisdom and knowledge. But the the more we partner, the more we become successful. This is in summary why this declaration means a lot to the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we're going to return to this question of multilateral collaboration. But as you say, there's no domain of human endeavor where multilateral collaboration has a more clear business case because of the crucial role of aggregating data assets from diverse sources on common standards as the fuel for AI. Your Excellency Professor Issa, these are sort of two questions. One, successes that you've had in Nigeria, things that you've learned from those but also what are the most important challenges that you've had to overcome and that you think we'll have to overcome in the future? Please. Thank you very much, Mr. Rudolph. Uh, Firstly, on the success story in Nigeria. And uh, going through the land of history, I can say the success story began around August 2019, which is uh, more than three years today, by when we crafted the national 
digital economy policy for a digital Nigeria. Pillar number seven in the, po in the policy is a uh, digital society and emerging technologies. AI falls under emerging technologies. AI, 5G, Internet of Things, cloud computing, autonomous vehicle, nanotechnology, biotechnology, all of them fall under emerging technologies. After crafting that policy, we commenced its implementation immediately. Parts of the implementation of that policy, we established what we call National Center for Artificial Intelligence and Robotics. That is a world-class center established by the government of Nigeria, where we brought all the world-class facilities that are required, the personnel with the expertise to manage the center, and also to mentor our younger ones, particularly to discover the talent we have in the country and see how we can effectively harness this talent that will come up with a solution to our indigenous challenges and problems within the country. The center has been very successful so far. Part of the events organized by the center, for example, only last week, the center concluded a form of training for our children, usually at primary and secondary level. We call the program Catch Them Young, meaning we challenge our children, our young innovators, starting from primary school, to think of any complex problem in our society and to come up with a solution that will address that complex problem through artificial intelligence. Over 800 of them participated. And only after the first training, one of my children came back home and he was telling me that he, is, uh, he was working on how my smartphone will recognize his own face as my own face. And I say, how can that happen? He say, you are my father. We share many things biologically. <laughs> so we need to come with a solution where your son can be identified by your smartphone as you are the one. So look at it. With just starting the training, he started thinking outside the box on how to resolve a problem by leveraging on our biological relationship of father-son. And uh, at the end of the training, one of my children got the second best prize in the country. Fantastic. Through what? Through identifying a problem and coming up with a solution in artificial intelligence. So this is part of what we have started. You will discover that children at primary school invented drones. And not only drones on paper, physically you can use the drones and they're at primary level. Why? Because children are more inclined to technology. They are digital natives. They understand technology better than all of us. Because in our own case, we, we partake in transition. We witness the manual world in primary and secondary level, including university. We had to switch to digital world today, to the virtual world. But our children do not need any transition. They only witness the technological advancement and they are part of the virtual world. They don't need any transition. And part of what we have been doing, which is part of the success story also, is uh, coming up with indigenous solutions that will address our indigenous problems, like in agriculture. To attain food security, we came up with a program that is called National Adopted Village for Smart Agriculture. That is NAFSA. And more than 80% of that program relies so much on artificial intelligence. We have trained around 815 farmers today. And each and every farmer has his own farm where we train them, we provide the facilities they require, and we monitor what they do. And by implication, if you adopt smart agriculture using artificial intelligence, in some cases, that will increase the productivity by over 300%. A case study of the Netherlands is a good example, which is not more than 42,000 square kilometers, but the largest, the second largest exporter of agrarian produce in the world beside the United States of America, but only 42. So this is another success story. And thirdly, we organized challenge where we participate in international events. 
In 2020 and 2019, I led a team of young Nigerians to an international event in which more than 760 contestants participated. One of the candidates I led, the young innovators from Nigeria, emerged as the global best in artificial intelligence. This is another success story. Thank you. And uh, finally, we came up with National Startup Bill. That bill is to provide so many opportunities for our young innovators to leverage on AI and come up with solutions. Government is willing to provide seed funding. Government is willing to support by tax holiday, by incentives, by loan where applicable. So these are some of our the Thank you, initiatives. Merci. There could be challenges, but we always consider challenges and failure as part of success, not opposite of success. Absolutely. So they only motivate us to do more. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. I know now our time has come to an end. I know that at the center of what the DCO, of course, is multilateral collaboration yeah. and how countries can work together to do things that they cannot do independently. Yeah. Thank you for driving that forward. That's what we all need. Thank you for this panel. Thank you for your time. Please join me in giving a warm round of applause. Thank you. Thank you so much, Your Excellencies, and thank you to Rudolf for that fantastic panel.